And here we go. Welcome on in to our Big 12 football week 11 power rankings. It is great to be here with you on the show as always. I'm Pete Mundo, your host, as we are on Facebook Live, of course, on the podcast. We'll be on YouTube as well. And uh, we've got this thing humming on Twitter spaces right now. Something I admit I have not done a lot of, but we're on Twitter Spaces, so be sure to check us out there as well as we get this show going and we run through our Big 12 football power rankings for uh, Week 11. Three weeks left in the regular season. Here we go. Let's do it. And as we always do, we're going to put these Big 12 power rankings in reverse order from 10 to 1, and then we'll dive into some other topics as well that are humming around the Big 12 here uh, today. At number 10. The West Virginia Mountaineers come in at number 10. There is a new last place team in the power rankings, and there should be. Because the Mountaineers played the Iowa State Cyclones, who were number 10 on Saturday, and they got blown out. If there was room for number 11, I'd put West Virginia number 11. But there's only 10 teams, so West Virginia gets the 10 spot. I just wonder how long this train wreck is going to continue in Morgantown. There's no more climb to trust. There just isn't. With Neil Brown, whose motto was trust the climb. And there's no more climb the trust in Morgantown. Seems like a great guy, but at some point there's got to be sign of improvement. And it just is not happening for West Virginia. So I've got the Mountaineers at number 10 in the power rankings this week. At number 9, the Iowa State Cyclones move up one slot. They get their first Big 12 win of the year over the aforementioned West Virginia Mountaineers. It was a good win. They played one of their best games of the season, especially on the offensive side of the ball. So you got to be happy about that if you're Iowa State and if you're an Iowa State fan. But at 1-5 in Big 12 play and beating West Virginia, I cannot justify having Iowa State any higher than number 9 in the power rankings. At number 8, Texas Tech moving down a spot from number 7. The Red Raiders are a fading team. After their loss to TCU on Saturday, they have now dropped two in a row and four of their last five games since beating Texas in overtime in what feels like a lifetime ago. And that was September 24th. And let's just be honest, that feels like a lot, lot longer ago than that for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And that was when Joey McGuire infamously said after the game, everything runs through Lubbock. And a TCU staff member actually trolled Joy McGuire over that uh, after the win on Saturday. So now Tech's in the spot where they're just hoping for a mediocre bowl game. But first, they've got to find two more wins against Kansas, Iowa State, and Oklahoma. So that's what's going on right now with the Texas Tech Red Raiders, who are sitting there at 4-5 and five overall. Got to win two of their next three games to find themselves bowl eligible which uh, it's never easy in the Big 12, but it's not going to be easy for Texas Tech those next three weeks. It's possible. I wouldn't sit here and tell you I think it's highly likely, but it's certainly possible. Number seven in the uh, Big 12 football power rankings this week, we've got the Oklahoma Sooners. So Oklahoma was number six last week. I bumped them down to number seven after a loss to Baylor on Saturday. So the defense is still not stopping anybody, especially on the ground. The offense does not have the firepower that it did under Lincoln Riley. So I'm giving Brent Venables a grace period here, but it would help if uh, he wins at least two of his next three games, close out the season against West Virginia, Oklahoma State, and Texas Tech. He can do it. Like, he can certainly do it. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you I feel great about that. I, I know West Virginia and Oklahoma State and Texas Tech are all three teams that are trending downward. There's no doubt about it. And if, if Brent Venables has a clean three-for-three three sweep, uh, you certainly feel better going into the offseason at 8-4 and four, and then possibly a bowl win at 9-4 and four than you do at, let's say, 7-5 and five or 6-6. Six and six. That would be ugly. But Oklahoma, it's just not their year. It's not going to happen for them this season. I've got them number seven this week in the power rankings. At number six, the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys are a quickly fading team. The injuries are piling up, and so are the losses. Oklahoma State has scored a total, a grand total, 
I mean, think about this, all right? Going into uh, what where this team was a couple of weeks ago. They've scored a total of 16 points in the last six quarters. And they've given up a total of 85 points over that stretch. That is brutal. And things are so bad in Stillwater right now, the Cyclones are favored on the road against the Pokes this weekend. If I told you two weeks ago, Iowa State would be a favorite against Oklahoma State this weekend, you would have to believe that Oklahoma State was playing with eight guys. Like suddenly Oklahoma State was playing eight-man football and Iowa State was playing 11-man football to believe that. That is a prime example of how topsy-turvy and crazy this league has been that Iowa State is now a favorite in Stillwater this weekend. At number five, the Kansas Jayhawks are five up from number eight. In the power rankings, they snap that three-game losing streak. They get a dominant win over Oklahoma State. They are bowl eligible for the first time in 14 years. Can you believe it? First time in 14 years. This team is bowl eligible. And they deserve it. Uh, They needed that bye week to kind of get back on track and feel good about themselves. And the defense is getting better. Jason Bean is getting more and more comfortable. Uh, So things are looking up for Kansas in the second half of the season. You got to like that. Uh, Let's go to number three. Excuse me, number four. Don't want to skip number four of the power rankings. I know, I know. If we're counting down, four comes after five. Uh, K-State. Historic win against Oklahoma State last week. They then lose to Texas on Saturday in disappointing fashion. And really, it's because Texas scored touchdowns on their first three drives. That's what this game comes down to. Uh, People want to rag on Adrian Martinez late in the game for the fumble. It's not fair. Martinez made some great plays in the second half to get him back into the game. I don't put that on him by any stretch of the imagination. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. The coaching staff, if you want to call somebody out for that final drive, you lose the game on a fumble, your guys are tired, and you have two timeouts in your pocket, that's on the coaching staff is what that is. But K-State, two losses in the Big 12. They are still right in the thick of the Big 12 title race. At number three in the power rankings, Texas. The Longhorns are rising after a solid win in Manhattan on Saturday. Second half was bad. UT only scored three points, but they held on, got the big turnover on the final drive when it mattered most, and feeding Bijan appears to be the answer for the Longhorns. Quinn Ewers has been so-so. Steve Sarkeesian should not mess with what's working, especially with TCU coming to town this weekend. At number two, the Baylor Bears. Baylor was uh, three last week. They're up to two after beating Oklahoma on the road for their third straight Big 12 win. They are 4-2 and two in conference play. They're right in the thick of this race. And the Bears have rebounded nicely on the season after starting off 1-2 and two in conference play. Uh, this is what I expected from Baylor all year long. Now, better late than never, uh, but they can still absolutely defend their Big 12 title in Arlington uh, next month. And at number one, you know who it's going to be in the Big 12 football power rankings. It is the TCU Horn Frogs. TCU deserves to stay in that top spot, despite once again having to come back against Texas Tech before pulling away for a 34-24 victory. But... um, Regardless, they're 9-0 and going into the final three weeks of the regular season, and they did it on Saturday without Quentin Johnston. He was sidelined with that ankle injury. Now, if they want to get the 10-0, and they're a touchdown underdog against Texas. I cannot figure out that spread, but Vegas was not built <laughs> on uh, guys like us winning money. But I want Quentin Johnston healthy for this game to feel a lot better about TCU pulling out the big win on the road against a vulnerable Texas secondary. So counting it down 10 to 1 on the Big 12 football power rankings this week. 10 West Virginia, 9 Iowa State, 8 Texas Tech, 7 Oklahoma, 6 Oklahoma State, 5 Kansas, 4 Kansas State, 3 Texas, 2 Baylor, and 1 TCU. That's where I've got the power rankings this week. I'm Pete Mundo, your host. HeartlandCollegeSports.com is, of course, the site and how you guys find us. Always appreciate you being here and being being a part of the show. Uh, let's look at some of the comments on Facebook Live. You can also throw those up in uh, Twitter spaces as well if you want to. 
Ke- uh, Kelly writes, Pete, I'm worried about Oklahoma State. Well, you should be. Oklahoma State looks like a train wreck right now. When you get outscored the way that they did, by the margins that they have the last couple of weeks, there's nothing to like about what's happened with Oklahoma State here as of late. Abs- you lose the last two games 85-16 to 16 in the state of Kansas against KU and against K-State. Uh, there is nothing to be optimistic about. This team is banged up. There's not a lot of depth. The defense cannot stop anybody. I mean, Derek Mason is, I know it's year one. I'm not saying you move on, but it's not been pretty for Derek Mason as defensive coordinator of the Oklahoma State Cowboys. So you should not feel good about Oklahoma State at all. Uh, Jace says, Pete, K-State has struggled in Waco in its history. Does that trend continue? Sikkim Bears. So Baylor's won four in a row in this series, actually. And yes, they have done very well in Waco. Two years ago in Waco, Baylor uh, won 32-31. Back in 2018, Baylor won 37-34. Last one, 2016 in Waco. Jim Grobe won that game against Bill Snyder. 42-21. 42-21. to 21. Prior to that, 2014, Baylor got the win. 2012, Baylor got the win. 2010, Baylor got the win. So, yeah, you're right about that. Uh, Baylor has dominated this series in Waco. There's no doubt about that. So, for this game in particular, I mean, I, I just my gut here as we talk about it early in the week, um, I like Baylor because I think they're playing some of the best football in this conference right now. And they're going to be home. That's always a benefit, especially when you consider how the series has gone. But this is basically an elimination game for the Big 12 championship is what this is. And that's why I I like this game and I'm intrigued by this game because whoever loses this game can kiss their hopes of a Big 12 championship game appearance goodbye. I mean, it's not going to happen for the loser of this game. And then you're going to be down to the possibility of really whoever wins If TCU beats Texas, and then whoever wins the uh, Baylor-Kansas State game, those two teams are going to be feeling good about themselves. But uh, if you look at the schedule, actually, I mean, if you look at it going forward over the next three weeks, uh, Baylor plays Texas Thanksgiving weekend, and that game very well could decide and could be a playing game for the Big 12 championship. I mean, that's a Friday game. That's a Black Friday game. So Baylor at Texas, November 25th, depending how things break, could ultimately decide who plays for a Big 12 championship. But you look at Baylor's schedule. I mean, they've got three ranked teams, the three ranked Big 12 teams the rest of the way, two of them at home. They host K-State this weekend. They host Baylor next Saturday. And then uh, they are on the road at Texas on Black Friday. So obviously, you know, Baylor's taking care of the easier part of the schedule. Now they go down the home stretch, and it is going to be very, very tricky down the home stretch uh, for this Baylor team. No doubt about that. Uh, Pete, for Oklahoma State, I don't want to blame Coach Gundy. Nope, not going to blame Gundy. Nah, I'm a Gundy guy through and through. I would not be blaming Mike Gundy by any stretch of the imagination for what's going on right now. So throw in those comments on uh, Facebook Live. We'll get to them here if we have time couple of interesting notes around the Big 12, or just around college football. Let's start here. San Diego State to the Pac-12. Did you see this report? By the way, I'm Pete Mundo. HeartlandCollegeSports.com is how you join us covering the Big 12. So Dan Patrick reported that San Diego State was on the verge of going to the Pac-12. Now, San Diego State has reportedly been a potential target for the Big 12. Now, this is not confirmed. This is from Dan Patrick's sources. Now, there were other sources and other reporters who refuted this after the fact. Nicole Auerbach, The Athletic, said uh, the report about the Pac-12 announcing the addition of San Diego State as soon as this week. A source close to the situation tells The Athletic that report is inaccurate. Nicole adds, it's been my understanding the Pac-12 will do its media deal first before any conference expansion. And other folks had that report as well. Um, I don't. I don't understand, as I look at this situation, I don't understand why the Pac-12 would have the media deal done before before they expand. Wouldn't you want to expand 
and then take your product to ESPN, Fox, Amazon, whoever, and say, here's what we've got, instead of trying to lock in a media deal and then saying, oh, and by the way, we've added San Diego State. I mean, listen, I, I just doesn't make any sense to me on why you would do it in that order. Now, John Canzano, uh, Pac-12 insider, also had this report uh, last week. The Pac-12 is kicking its tires. San Diego State wants to be a Power 5. Also, the Big 12 is lurking and may have interest in San Diego State as well. Over the weekend, the Big 12 announced it re-upped its media deal, ESPN and Fox, uh, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I'm looking at this first off. If San Diego State goes to the uh, Pac-12, I mean, it's actually a good get for the Pac-12. I'll give them that for a, a conference that I think should still be dying off and the Big 12 should make a move sooner rather than later. But, um, you know, if you told me right now as a Big 12 fan and a Big 12 guy, give me San Diego State or Gonzaga, I'm taking San Diego State 11 out of 10 times. Like, it's not even close. I, I don't know where this report came from with Gonzaga last week, of course, with them apparently meeting uh, with Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark, who I think has done a very good job as commissioner. But I sit here and I say to myself, okay, I can get San Diego State or – Gonzaga? I mean, I understand Gonzaga's got a world-class basketball program, but it's based on Mark Few. If Mark Few goes away, what happens to Gonzaga basketball? If something, God forbid, happens to Mark Few, what happens to Gonzaga? Mark Few is Gonzaga basketball. So that's something that I don't really understand on why, and maybe you just take the meeting. You know, we don't really have any other details right now, but if there's an infatuation with Gonzaga because of the basketball program, instead of saying, hmm, San Diego, California, top, what, 20 market, you get into that uh, Western time zone that Brett Yormark apparently wants to be in, you get a program that's dumped a lot of money into the football side of things lately, um, you know, you obviously have outstanding weather, <laughs> although it's been hot as hell down there for those football games as far as I can tell. But anyway, um, there's a lot more appeal to me to San Diego State for the Big 12 if it wants to get out that far west than there is to Gonzaga. That just doesn't make any sense. So we'll wait and see, but the mixed reporting around San Diego State is worth watching because it looks like the Pac-12 is trying to make a move to not die off. But that's when the Big 12's got to get in the mix here and say, okay, Four Corners, come on in. Hello, Arizona. Hello, Arizona State. Hello, Utah. Hello, Colorado. Get it done. That's what I'd be doing as soon as I could if I'm Brett Yormark, because if not, you may lose the opportunity to make a serious move like this, to make a splash like this, and then ultimately find out whether or not your team's going to be able or your conference is going to be able to expand in the way you want to expand. So I know there's a lot of moving parts. I'm not sitting here making it out to be easier than it is, or at least I'm not trying to, but... That's what the Big 12 should be looking at right now in terms of the idea of possible expansion based on this report that San Diego State is going to be going to the Pac-12, which once again is a report from Dan Patrick. Other folks have disputed that, but seriously, something, obviously something is happening there that at least warrants serious conversation. So that was a, uh, that was a notable news item on Monday. And then you had this. Over the weekend, Nebraska is considering two former Big 12 coaches in the name of Gary Patterson, at T formerly of TCU. And, of course, uh, you've got none other than Matt Rule. Now, here's the thing. I'm looking at this, and I'm saying to myself, uh, I love Gary Patterson. I was always a big Gary Patterson guy. I thought that Gary Patterson was, uh, when I would go to the Big 12 media days, the most enjoyable coach to talk to. I really felt that way about Gary Patterson. And by the way, this report came from Football Scoop. But I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, okay, um, if you're in Nebraska and you see Sonny Dykes taking this TCU team, basically Gary Patterson's guys, to a 9-0 and record. And this is a guy, Gary Patterson, who was stuck in mediocrity for the last several seasons at TCU with the same group of guys that Sonny Dykes has off to a 9-0 and start. 
Here are the last four seasons before he got fired at TCU. Seven and six, five and seven, six and four, three and five. And he had top 25 recruiting classes almost every year. Why would you hire the guy that TCU got rid of? They bring in Sonny Dykes, and Sonny Dykes is 9-0 and now with a team that Gary Patterson could barely get to a bowl game. Like, maybe Gary's pitch is, hey, I had to hit the reset button. I was burnt out. I was tired. It happens. Uh, Sonny's doing great. I'm happy for those guys, but I'm also reignited. Of course, he's currently a defensive assistant at uh, Texas or a special assistant, whatever they call him. You know, they got 25 different titles now on these college football staffs. Um, but maybe that's the case to make for Gary Patterson. I don't know. And I'm happy to listen. I think you listen if Gary Patterson's interested. But I also would say, okay, let's let's pump the brakes here for a second. I'm not necessarily jumping on a Gary Patterson train based on what I'm seeing Sonny Dykes do there right now with his guys. I'm just not doing it. So I'd be cautious on that front. Now, the other one, Matt Rule, if I'm Nebraska, I'd be much more interested in doing that. Matt Rule, uh, fresh off the NFL, obviously didn't work out at the Carolina Panthers. And here's the problem in the NFL. You don't have a quarterback, you're not going to win. And you're going to lose your job in two to three years. It's just how it goes. And he never had a quarterback. But the story of Matt Rule's college career is much different. He took Temple and Baylor from cellar dwellers to conference contenders. In Matt Rule's first year at Temple, he went 2-10. and 10. In his final year at Temple, he went 10-3. and 3. In Matt Rule's first year at Baylor, he was 1-11. and 11, And then he was 11-3 and 3 his third year. Uh, got that team to a Big 12 championship game. Almost beat Oklahoma on a third-string quarterback. And, of course, has a great year. And then goes to the NFL. So this guy rebuilds programs. There's no doubt in my mind Matt Rule can rebuild, uh, you know, a place like Nebraska. He's one of the few that I actually think could do it at a place like Nebraska. But I'd, I'd be, you know, if I'm West Virginia, and I don't know if they have the money to hire a guy like Matt Rule who's getting paid 800 and something thousand dollars a month uh, to sit on the sidelines after he got canned by Carolina. I don't know if the Mountaineers have that kind of dough sitting around. I mean, seriously, he's going to make more money not working from the Carolina Panthers than he would working at like West Virginia or probably anywhere for that matter at $800,000 a year, right? I mean, we're talking eight, nine, 10 mil a year at that rate. So you got to look at this and say to yourself, okay, what's appealing to Matt Rule? If I'm West Virginia, I want Matt Rule. Matt Rule knows the Big 12. Matt Rule knows your conference. He's, you know, Penn State guy, East Coast guy. That's who I want at West Virginia. Now, if it's down to West Virginia and Nebraska, Nebraska can back up the dump trucks in a way that West Virginia can't. But that's why it's imperative for the Mountaineers to at least make a move and see what's out there and what's available and what's realistic for you because Neil Brown is not it. And I'll fully admit, if you're going to get into a, a, a – um, you know, who can sign a bigger check, Nebraska or West Virginia? We know what the answer is going to be. But if you're the Mountaineers, you at least got to find out what that interest is, if at all, from a guy like Matt Rule, because he will rebuild West Virginia if he's given the chance to do so. I'm Pete Mundo, heartlandcollegesports.com, covering the Big 12 top to bottom. Always good to have you guys on the show. Thank you for being here. Hey, um, podcast listeners, I'm showing this right now on, on Facebook Live and YouTube. If you want that excellent Heartland College Sports koozie, all you have to do is leave me a rating and a review and send me a screenshot of that rating and review on iTunes to Pete Mundo, M-U-N-D-O, at heartlandcollegesports.com. So appreciate you guys. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk to you soon. Covering the Big 12 right here at heartlandcollegesports.com. Take care.